Hello, I'm JW. This time a couple more items have been sent in. Here's one of them. I've actually got two of these, uh, both identical. And these are actually dimmers which plug in to a normal outlet. So you've got your 13 amp socket there, or in fact it's not a 13 in this case, as we'll see later. And then you're going to plug your appliance in the front there. And then you can adjust the brightness of the lamp or whatever you plugged in using the knob on the front. So let's have a look at the note and also a closer look at these devices. Now here's the letter that came with these. And so I've got two of these, both identical. No uh, particular surprises there. And uh, it says here, please find a close to faulty dimmer switches for teardown diagnosis. And you purchase these for yourself from the UK distributor manufacturer. The failure rate is rather shocking. And uh, please can enlighten us to the failure in general electrical stand of the product. Well, we will, but of course they didn't provide any other details of the name of a mark. So uh, hopefully they'll uh, see the video and uh, get the information from that. Now, uh, what we've actually got here is a uh, UK plug here on the back, so that would just shove into your normal socket. And then on the front here, obviously it's where you plug in the uh, appliance in question. And this is going to be a light of some kind. And then you can adjust the brightness of the light using the adjusting knob on the front. And apparently both of these have failed. Now have a look at the back here, see it's a DMR1. And uh, main voltage obviously for the UK, 230 and 50 hertz. And the most important bit here really is the maximum wattage, which is only 300 watts. And uh, it's branded uh, Mercury, whoever they may be. And it's got the uh, Cromulent electrical uh, symbol on there, not to be thrown in the bin, only suitable for use indoors. But uh, 300 watts maximum kind of highlights one of the uh, main problems with these products. They're only suitable for very low loads. And of course, they're really only suitable for lighting. And by lighting, we're meaning uh, things that can actually be dimmed, which these days is not a whole lot of stuff. So. A sort of typical uh, incandescent lamp of the style you're not supposed to be able to buy anymore. Certainly you can. Maybe some LEDs, but only ones that are designed for dimming. And in terms of combat fluorescent jobs, well, uh, basically you can forget it. Standard plug on the front there with the shutters inside, so actually they're red in this case. And then the uh, earth pin, of course, would uh, open those when you shove that in there. Now, before we uh, take this apart, which may involve destruction, because uh, that's a very strange... Uh, three pin job in there but uh, let's just see uh, what the situation with these is so what we've got here is an incandescent lamp this is a 40 watt item and it's the uh, style you're not supposed to be able to buy anymore so if we just plug that straight in then unsurprisingly it lights up so uh, that's fine so let's just try these two then so let's plug these into the uh, actual thing here so there's a huge problem there you can't put two next to each other because they're too fat so uh, Shove that in there, and we'll just try it in the first one. Now, uh, nothing doing there, so... Right, well, there we go. So uh, that one appears to be working, even though these are supposed to be faulty, so certainly a reasonable control of the uh, level with that one. Let's try the other one over here. And again, that seems to be working as well. It doesn't... Uh, from there to there is sort of a dead space, but in terms of the uh, dimming functionality, then uh, it does appear to work, at least at the uh, higher end of the adjustment there. So uh, there we go. So if they are faulty, they're not as faulty as you uh, would expect. So yeah, that's got a bit less sort of dead space on it, but there's uh, certainly the dead space at the bottom and this is probably on a triac type of dimmer so that when you turn it up there's a minimum point where it will actually strike which is there but once you've got there you can actually turn it down below that point it's going to have a very dull glow there so it appears that these are not entirely faulty they seem to be working perfectly at least with this type of lamp and uh, There you go. Now, as I said earlier, it's quite likely these are not going to work with things like LEDs and whatever, because, of course, uh, LEDs, things do need to be designed to be dimmable, otherwise all kinds of bizarre stuff can happen. But uh, nevertheless, uh, they certainly do appear to be working. So uh, let's see if we can get inside one and see what's actually inside it. So let's see what's inside one of these things. Now, unfortunately, the uh, screw heads here are some uh, other weird type of thing and uh, I don't have any bits that will actually fit these and I'm not entirely sure what those would actually be called either and no it's not tri-wing because that's basically three lobes but this is a basically 
tri-wing or three, but the middle is solid, so a standard sort of tri-wing bit will not fit. So it's sort of one of those, but with a uh, reset in the middle, which obviously would fit over that solid piece in the centre there. So uh, if anybody knows what that is actually called, or where to get a uh, bit for it, then please put that in the comments section to the video. But uh, as you can see, uh, they're both pretty much the same there. Three prongs, but uh, with the centre filled, so it would have to be a sort of a three pin device or something to actually get in there and again it's going to have to be quite deep and not wide because of course it's got to fit down inside the plastic however there are other methods of opening these things so uh, drilling the uh, fasteners away is the uh, approved choice here and then we can have a look what we've got inside so in the top here we've just got the uh, actual shutter mechanism that's just popped out but basically it's the usual thing where we've got a spring and then the shutters just uh, slide open with the earth pin. So that's the sort of default closed position. The spring goes in the middle there. And then when the pin goes in, it just slides down to uncover the others. So pretty standard there. And then that's just the knob that uh, drops in there, fit onto the back of the component in here. And in terms of what we've got in here, it's pretty straightforward. Just got the two uh, line and neutral here, comes straight through from the pin on the back. And then we've just got the wires connected to that just going off to the uh, actual board at the top here. So neutral is just connected through for uh, basically a reference there and the actual connection goes straight through. And then the line here, we've got the connection at the bottom there which goes up to the board and then we've got another one coming from the board down to the connection at the front. So it's basically black, which is a rather odd choice for line, but goes in the board and it comes back out and then goes through to the thing you've plugged in on the front. And you can see there's no actual connection between the front and the back there, whereas of course the neutral is just solid all the way through and no connection to the earth at all, that's just again a straight through thing from this side from the pin on the back. Now for the circuit here it looks pretty much like the classic uh, triac uh, dimming arrangement, so uh, basically it's line in, goes through the, uh, there's basically a diac and a triac on the front here and then that just cuts the AC waveform at the appropriate point as determined by the variable resistor here. So uh, if it sort of cuts it halfway through, that's going to be roughly 50% and uh, so on. And uh, this one's also got a neutral connection, but that appears to be used just for uh, interference suppression in this case, because uh, the normal dimmage you might say to put on the wall or whatever, just have the uh, line in and line out connections. And uh, what we've got here, as we saw there, the uh, black is the line input, so that's uh, over on this side. And we do have a fuse here, though it's one of those sort of horrible glassy ones, so not necessarily the best, but uh, it's all enclosed in the case anyway. But uh, fuse there to obviously blow in the case of overload. So uh, this uh, pin here is the uh, actual input, goes straight over to the fuse there, and then we've got from the fuse it just goes over to this uh, trace on the top here. And all we've got there, there's a very small resistor there between the uh, actual input there, the line, and then the neutral here. And then the other thing we've got is this uh, capacitor here, which again is from the line and the neutral, so it's purely a sort of interference suppressing type of arrangement. Resistor there just to bleed any uh, charge off in the capacitor once the power is removed. And that's where that's the only connection to the neutral is purely for this capacitor, so uh, no doubt for some interference uh, removal on that. And then the rest of it is pretty much a standard uh, dimming circuit. So uh, say the uh, line in is at the top here via that uh, fuse there two other connections there, one of which is this uh, moderately sizable inductor, and then we've got another capacitor here on the side, which basically comes across uh, to there. As you can see that's over there, and then the uh, main device here, don't see the number on that, but let's uh, see if we can get that, uh, put that on the screen there. But this will be the triac that does the actual switching. And uh, via this uh, variable resistor in the centre here, which is what the actual knob uh, on the front will adjust, that will determine the point in the waveform at which it cuts the uh, actual power on and off. So this is the output here. It comes directly from the actual uh, triac there. This will be the uh, diac to uh, switch the thing at the appropriate point, or trigger the thing at the appropriate point. And then the only other thing's got here, a couple of resistors here, which we use to uh, set the range of the uh, knob on the front. So uh, 
yeah, it's not a whole lot involved there. And again, it's pretty much the standard sort of uh, dimming circuit you'd expect to find. And the induct here, again, is just going to be used for uh, smoothing. It would work uh, without that, but it uh, would be a fairly noisy thing. Now, I have at least made an effort to glue the inductor in place with that glue there. But as you can see, it's actually come loose uh, on this one, but uh, some sort of effort was made there. So uh, pretty uh, straightforward thing, and uh, I'd say in terms of how it works, it's pretty much the classic uh, AC dimming circuit, just with the addition of a fuse here. Now, of course, this is running off a uh, basically unfused or 32 amp uh, fused circuit for most of the UK. So there we have it. So uh, not a whole lot inside, and so this one uh, and the other one appear to be working. So uh, not entirely clear whether we've been sent the uh, working ones by mistake or whatever, but. The usual failure on these things, um, aside from obviously the fuse blowing if someone just plugged in a kettle or something, the usual failure is actually the uh, triac here, and then the failure mode, so when these are actually failed, is they normally fail permanently shorted, so then the result is that you still get the thing working, except you can't adjust the brightness, it's very much at full brightness all the time. But uh, other than that, it's not terribly uh, badly constructed, I mean the only distance here, see so that is basically the width of the uh, screwdriver blade there, which is 3mm, so a decent amount of clearance between the neutral here and the two lines. And uh, it's less spacing here, but again it doesn't particularly matter because all of this is going to be at uh, the same voltage anyhow, it's only really the difference between the neutral and the uh, input and output. So uh, fairly well uh, constructed as these things go. Of course it's made down to the uh, lowest price and everything, but then uh, most things these days are. So there we have it, and so I got the uh, interference suppression capacitor as well. So overall, uh, fairly reasonably manufactured. Bit of uh, stupid, uh, weird fastenings, but they seem to be a common choice these days on all of this stuff. And this is yet another weirdo choice, but uh, certainly electrically, I mean, it's basically a standard dimmer. Nothing too surprising, and uh, for whatever reason, these things do appear to work. And of course, this one uh, is going to be exactly the same inside, so we'll leave that one there as is. So uh, that's it for this time, and until next time, thanks for watching.